quite many people were asking me about going for a master's first and then going for a PhD in comparison to going for a PhD directly. Many others ask me, is it worth coming to the US for studying now? Well, my view is that if you want to pursue PhD, then definitely. For masters and bachelors, however, uh, maybe. So I will tell you five reasons why you should come to the US for a PhD rather than masters or bachelors. This is Chaitanya Sambhara, faculty at the College of Business, University of Texas, Arlington. Reason number one is that PhD is a free degree that rather pays. See, scholarships are not guaranteed in bachelor's and master's programs. Not that people don't get them, they do, but not very many students get scholarships. If you do not have a scholarship or a tuition waiver of some kind, you will have to pay for your education. Though many people get partial scholarships, they have to pay the remainder fee from their own savings or bank loans. A thing to remember is that it is not just the tuition, you also need to pay for your living expenses. That includes food, rent, utility bills and many more expenses such as laundry, books, all sorts of college and living supplies, etc. If you are a bachelor student, you will have to incur all these expenses for four long years. It is no joke. Often people work long hours at odd jobs such as waiter at a restaurant or a tutor on campus which eats up their study time. The point is that education and living in the US is not cheap. You earn well, no doubt, but you earn only after you get a full-time job, not as a student. Education in India, on the other hand, is much more affordable. A PhD program in the US is a whole different story. It is fully funded, you in fact get paid to study, you get a decent stipend and you don't have to pay tuition fee. The stipend you get here is probably better than the stipend you can get in any other country. In summary, fee waiver and financial assistantships and stipends are usually always guaranteed in a PhD program. For that reason, if you are considering a PhD, in my view, the US is the best place to go. The second reason is that a PhD saves you from the worst possible outcome. See, in last two years, the worst possible outcome has been realized by more people than in the previous years. And what is that worst possible outcome? If you are not from a financially well-to-do family and you come to the US for a bachelor's or a master's degree, it may happen that you may not be able to secure a job. If you do not have a job within 90 days after graduation, you must either enroll in a higher degree program or leave the country. If you did bachelor's, you can go for a master's and if you did master's, you can go for another master's or a PhD. If you do not continue your education and if you do not have a job, you have to leave the US. You will have to start your job search from scratch in your home country and you will have to repay your loans while you are probably earning less in a currency that is lower in value as compared to the US dollars. If you did your PhD in the US, however, you had not paid any tuition fee and you likely won't have much loans. So the financial burden is eased in such a situation. You can look for a job in the industry and you can also look for an academic job. If you come from such a large country like India, where you have so many universities, you are very well qualified to get a good job because of your solid credentials, where you have a well-regarded PhD degree from the United States. The third reason is to do with the quality of people and the bonding opportunities. The quality of people you are surrounded with is very high in a PhD program. When you are in college, there are people who are not as hardworking and tend to fool around. Such people usually do not go for a master's degree. So the people you will find in a master's program are filtered out. The ratio of people who go for the next level, that is for a PhD then, is even more filtered. You are surrounded by committed people who want to learn and grow. People who are in a PhD program don't have to be there. Unlike bachelors and in some cases even masters, Nobody has forced them to go for a PhD. They are all there by choice because they genuinely want to learn and grow. Moreover, you spend many years with them. You don't only interact with your cohorts, but you also have your seniors, you have your batchmates, and then your juniors. You get to be friends with them for many years while you spend every day of your life with them. 
you get to travel abroad to attend conferences, take small vacations with them, and simply have some good fun. In a master's program, for example, you cannot get such an experience. You are in school just for one to two years, you are busy taking courses, and the people in your classes are not always the same. So you never really get to spend time with people around you and make friends the way you can do it in a PhD program. The fourth reason is your relationships with professors and strong interpersonal connections. If you look at it from a professor's perspective, spending too much time with a bachelor's and master's students is not a good idea. When I say that, I mean professors who are in research universities are either tenured or are on tenure track and are research active professors. See, bachelor's students, let's be real, are immature and they are just figuring out their college life and their interests. They are at the level of learning very basic concepts. Master students are a bit better, but they are on campus for a very short time. They graduate and leave too soon. PhD students, on the other hand, want to be researchers and are willing to put in the effort to learn the skills. My advisor once said, each PhD student is a 10-year project for me. The four to six years of PhD time followed by continuing research projects after your graduation. So you get to work closely with professors who are extremely knowledgeable in their area. When you are in their bachelor's or master's level classes, you are just learning something that has already been discovered and documented by somebody else. Whereas when you are working closely with a professor on research projects, you are discovering something new, something that nobody has known until now. This intellectual exercise also helps you grow and build strong interpersonal connections with those professors. You make lifelong friendships with your mentors. The fifth reason is that you come out of a PhD program more mature. If you start working after bachelor's or master's, you start earning right away. You may have endured financial hardships, but they were for a limited time. Although not always, but sometimes people lose their mind when they start seeing money. In case of PhD, you probably had to live frugally for many years. In my case, I was almost 32 years old when I finished my PhD. While my peers from college had started earning at the age of 22, I had to wait for 10 whole years more to start earning. Although I was not dying of hunger or anything, but in all these years, I had seen some financial hardships. You also are older and you mature a bit more through these years. Therefore, you are likely to make better financial decisions. In conclusion, this is just one way of thinking that I presented in this video. None of what I'm saying is universally true. I'm only encouraging people to pursue a PhD program, but I'm in no way suggesting that PhD is a necessary objective that must be achieved. In my honest view, even a college bachelor's degree is not required for success. But in this world as it stands today, at least a bachelor's degree is a must if you are to have a career of some sort. There are exceptions, no doubt, but that is what they are exceptions. Now, if your interests lie in a profession, for example, if you love to code and build applications, and that is what you want to build your career in, pursuing a PhD is obviously a waste of your time. Therefore, there are caveats to everything I said in this video. None of what I said should be taken at face value. Accept what you want and reject the rest. Everything I said here is just one angle of looking at things and is just my personal view. In fact, one can have many valid arguments against what I said. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind and God bless America.